This is WCBS Author Talks. I'm Lisa Chernkovich. We've ventured out of our Lower Manhattan studios and made our way uptown to Thriller Fest, which is the annual convention of thriller writers. And joining me right now is one such author, Peter James. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. It's great to be here. So let's start off the bat talking about your new book, which is soon to come out, Dead If You Don't. Tell us a little bit about it. Dead If You Don't is one of my detective invest detective Superintendent Roy Grace novels. And I'd long wanted to write a book that took place over 24 hours, because then you get the most tremendous kind of pace and tension. And the one kind of crime that does get resolved very fast is kidnap. So I thought I'd set the book around a kidnap. And basically, a father takes his 14-year-old son to the first big football game of, of, of the year in Brighton and Sussex in England, bumps into a business colleague, turns around, and his son's banished. And he looks for him everywhere. Three hours later, he gets a text saying, if you ever want to see your son alive again, we want 1.5 million pounds in bitcoins. Mm. But what they, don't, what they don't know is the father, whilst he has always been outwardly one of the wealthiest guys in the city, has a gambling habit. And he's just two days before lost everything he has. He's about to lose his home, uh, his house. So he's got no money to pay the ransom. And that's the, the starting point. And you, it follows, the book goes through hour by hour? It does. It goes through like on the half hour. That's very cool. It's very like the TV show 24, which always has you on the edge of your seat. So I imagine that readers are going to be at the edge of their seats reading through this book. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I, I love the kind of the idea of a ticking clock always in, in a story. So a little bit of a quirk that some people might not know is a lot of your recent books have dead in the title. How do you keep coming up with a play on the words? Well, I love, when I, when I first started writing, all my novels had one word titles like Possession, and then the next thing, another book called Possession. And then I wrote a book called Twilight, and somebody else used that title too. <laughs> so I thought, I want to come up with a title that actually is, nobody else is going to use without it being obvious. So I, the first book in the Roy Grace series was called Dead Sample, and then I came up with Looking Good Dead. And people started saying, oh, you, is this going to be the Dead series? And I thought, this, this is fun. And I, it's a real challenge. It gets harder with every book. Um, but Dead If You Don't actually just suddenly popped one day. I was, I was originally going to call it Dead If You Do. And my publisher said, no, I think Dead If You Don't sounds better. So that was how that came about. Do you have a list at home that you work off of? Or you just let it come to you as you're, you're writing the plot? I have a list at home. And also, we have a whiteboard in the office. And all my team, if they think of a title, uh, they get it, they write it up, and if, I, if we use a title, they get, they get a case of champagne. <laughs> That's a nice prize. <laughs> yeah, so it's a good incentive. So people walk in the office for the first time, they see all these dead everywhere, and they go, <laughs> this guy must be pretty weird. And I know uh, you also write plays, and you've got a new one that debuts in the UK next year? Yeah, I've had four, three of my past novels adapted for the theater, um, and I wrote a ghost story uh, called The House on Cold Hill, which came out uh, about three years ago. And that starts on national tour in, in January um, as a stage play, which is going to be interesting. What's it like to really see your characters come to life? Do you know, I love it. And what I also love is watching the audiences, because you can't sit and watch somebody reading a novel. <laughs> it's a bit weird. But I love sitting in the back of the theater and watching how people react. And I learned quite a lot about my craft from what people react to in the theater. But also, live theater is dangerous. Um, things can go wrong. Um, and in the play of my novel, Dead Simple, the book and the play start off, it's a bachelor party. And this guy has always played terrible pranks on his friends. And they decide to pay him back big time by burying him alive in a coffin for two hours. <laughs> and then they're going to come back. They're going to go partying, do a few bars, and they're going to come back and dig him out. And they all get wiped out in a car wreck. And they actually had the car wreck on stage. It was wonderfully done. There was a headlight, screams, bang, and the complete silence. And the guy in the coffin has a walkie-talkie. And he, and he cries out in the, the theater. It's completely dark. And he cries out, where am I? And somebody in the audience shouted out, you're in Woking, mate. <laughs> So it ends up being like even more immersive. I know as a reader, like if I'm reading something and really get into it, you do end up talking back to the book, to the author, to the characters. And I guess you can really do that when it's happening live in front of you on the Absolutely, stage. Absolutely, yeah. There, there's something, I think that danger makes it so much more exciting. 
So I know you also have a new project that you're working on that you want to tell us about. Yeah, I have a book coming out. It's an audio exclusive for 12 months, coming out October the 4th, called Absolute Proof. And this book I've been working on since 1989. I got a phone call out the blue from an elderly sounding guy one afternoon and said, is that Peter James, the author? And I go, yes. Thank God I found you. It's taken me two weeks. I phoned every Peter James in the phone book. Uh, I'm not a lunatic. I was a bomber pilot in the war. I'm a retired university professor. I have been given absolute proof of God's existence. And I've been told, you're the man to help me get taken seriously. And I go, OK. And Basically, I, I met the guy, and he was actually a bright, intelligent guy. And it set me off on a, on a, on a kind of mission to kind of... What, what I became fascinated by was what would happen if somebody credible actually did have proof of God. And I, I went and talked to a bishop friend of mine, and he said, I think they'd be assassinated, because whose God would it be? You've got all the different factions, the Anglican Church, Catholic, Judaic, Islamic, the Sikhs, that China isn't going to want a higher power usurping them. And I thought, got my story. So it's kind of in the Dan Brown, Da Vinci Code kind of big canvas thriller. But it centers on the theme of what would happen, really what would happen if somebody credible claimed to have proof of God's existence. And I've had a great journey writing it. It's been, I've talked over the years to numerous uh, scientists who have faith, priests, hardcore atheists. Um, and one of the most interesting comments, I met the Archbishop of Canterbury last year. He heard about the book and invited my wife and I to, to drinks. And I was talking, I said, I said, so what do you think would happen if somebody had proof of God's existence? And he smiled and he said, well, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> so uh, we're here at Thriller Fest. Let's talk a little bit about your role in the organization. You're the international vice president. What does that entail for you? International vice president role is, is basically a roving ambassador. Um, I, I, I always joke that I'm the I in ITW, <laughs> International <laughs> Thriller Writers. Um, and this is, I think, the loveliest organization for authors in the world because, for a start, Authors join free. There are no membership dues. And it's an entirely altruistic organization. You know, Lee Child is on the board. David Morell was one of the founders. And it's really been set up by authors to help other authors get known, get established, uh, and to help them with kind of issues. So it's an incredibly charitable organization. And it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful social club. You know, Thriller Fest once a year. I think it's the friendliest festival in, in, in the world. So what I do is where I'm on book tour around the world, and I, like this year I've just been in, in, the, in the Emirates, uh, I'm going to Russia, uh, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, um, France, uh, Norway. I, when I meet authors abroad, I tell them about ITW because they, mostly they don't know about it. And I say you can join in like 30 seconds and you get access to all uh, you know, the publications, you can get publicized to your own books, uh, you can get to come to Thriller Fest, you get all the kind of the help and wisdom if, if you want to change agents. You know, there's, there's a huge raft of stuff that ITW can help with. It's really a very big resource. It's a tremendous resource and it's about to get bigger as well. We're, we're looking to try and set up a, a translation service for overseas authors. Well, Peter James, thank you so much for taking some time out of what I know is a busy day for you and uh, joining us here. Thank you so much. It's really nice to see you. So if you want to hear more author interviews, you can check out our podcast, which is available on iTunes and the Radio.com app. Check out the videos on our YouTube page. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at WCBS 880 Books.